Okay, so we have seen how um, uh, the notion of a Fourier series for a periodic function can be generalized to the notion of a Fourier transform for a non-periodic function and how uh, you know the summation of you know the series exp uh, expansion now becomes basically an integral right so it's a Fourier integral uh, a function can be written as a Fourier integral right in, in terms of the inverse Fourier transform and then there is a forward Fourier transform which gives you the Fourier transform of the function right. So very often in practical applications it's uh, we, we encounter you know functions which are which uh, which are no, which may be non periodic right so for for transforms are pertain to functions which are non periodic but they are either even or odd so they have you know well defined parity and in such a scenario you know it's more convenient to work not with with the full fourier transform itself but uh, define a special kind of fourier transform which is you know either a sine Fourier transform or a cosine Fourier transform. So this is the, going to be the content of this lecture. Okay, so we have seen how you know any arbitrary function f of x can be written as an integral minus infinity to plus infinity g of alpha e to the i alpha x d alpha and then where g of alpha is the Fourier transform of the function which is given by another integral 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x times e to the minus i alpha x dx right so it's important to mention that you know this this factor of 1 over 2 pi which appears uh, you know in the definition of g of alpha is is a matter of convention right so the rule is that you know the if you put a coefficient c1 in the first equation and a coefficient c2 in the second equation the product of these two coefficients must be 1 over 2 pi so you will see in you know different textbooks different ways of you know dividing these two factors c1 and c2 right so very common um, convention is to use 1 over square root of 2 pi in each of these integrals right so sometimes you may find 1 over 2 pi in the other in uh, in the definition of f of x and so on right so it doesn't matter right so there's nothing sacrosanct about what definition you use uh, so the important thing is of course to be consistent right so if you define Fourier transform in a certain way that immediately fixes what the inverse Fourier transform must be okay so let's see what happens if if f of so the, the statement is the following if f of x is even then so is g of alpha and if f of x is odd then so is g of alpha it, this doesn't care about what factors you ascribe to them right clearly so let's see how this uh, you know this follows directly from the definition so if you want to pause the video and work this out for yourself please feel free to do so so the argument is straightforward so we write down g, we have the expression for g of alpha so we are able to immediately write down an expression for g of minus alpha so you just replace alpha by minus alpha and then you have 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x e to the i alpha x dx right so now if you change the variable of you know x to minus x right so i mean you can use some other dummy variable it doesn't matter but it's convenient to just rewrite it in terms of x in the end so then you have you know x becomes minus x so you again this e to the i alpha x will become e to the minus i alpha x dx will become minus dx and your limits you know also get changed so this uh, factor of minus 1 which comes from dx and this you know reversal of the limits if you you know operate if you do both of them then you might as well do nothing right so so if you you can just write down g of minus alpha as this expression my 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of minus x e to the mi minus i alpha x dx from this expression we immediately conclude that if f of x is is odd so is g of alpha and if f, f of x is even then so is g of alpha right so if f of x is even then f of minus x is going to be equal to f of x so then of course you immediately see that g of minus alpha is going to be g of alpha on the other hand if f of x gave you a minus sign that will reflect in g of minus alpha as well so g of minus alpha will then become minus g of alpha and therefore you see that the oddness or the evenness of a function 
gets reflected in the oddness or even as respectively of its Fourier transform, right. So, because of this we can define you know what is called a Fourier sign transform if you have a an odd function, right. So, if you have an odd function, so you, if we have seen that you know all the information for you know pertaining to a function is contained you know in the interval 0 to infinity itself, you do not have to go from minus infinity to infinity, right. It's, whatever information is available you know to the right of the origin you know it, it has full information about for you know all values of x to the left of the origin as well right so 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 the definition for uh, right so here we have used a, a symmetric way of splitting these factors right so this is just some convention again like i said right at the beginning you have the freedom to to pick these coefficients. So, I am just using a, a symmetric you know a definition in which these coefficients are shared in the in the, you know in the same uh, in an identical manner between the forward transform and the inverse transform. So, if you so if you have an odd function right. So, you just have to look at this and convince yourself that this is this makes perfect sense right. You can start with your original Fourier transform as it is right and then you see that you know the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity can be written as you know just the integral from 0 to infinity with appropriate factors right. So, um, so now you have so, so the definition for this the Fourier sign transform is simply given by square root of 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity f s of x sine of alpha x dx and the inverse Fourier transform gives you the representation for your function in terms of this integral right. So, integral from 0 to infinity g s of alpha sin of alpha x d alpha right. So, this is uh, you know to be viewed in parallel you know to these expressions and so you see that instead of your limits going from minus infinity to plus infinity here it will go from 0 to infinity. And similarly, there is the notion of a Fourier cosine transform once again you know even in an even function all the information about the function is contained you know in the right half of your uh, x axis you do not have to go to minus x at all right. So, uh, here it makes more sense to work with cosines right. So, uh, so you have so this, the sign part is going to cancel right. So, so it is only the cosine part which will which will live and so you have 0 to infinity g so, f of f c of x right f c, uh, the subscript is you know tells you that it is a Courier uh, a cosine transform is in play and it is it is an even function. So, you have square root of 2 by pi integral from 0 to infinity g c of alpha cosine of alpha x d alpha and the Fourier cosine transform itself is defined as g c of alpha is equal to square root of 2 by pi integral from 0 to infinity f c of x cosine of alpha x d x. So, Fourier transforms have lots of applications. So, let us just look at one example and here we will actually use uh, you know work with a function which is which is even. So, consider this non periodic function f of x is equal to 1 from minus 1 to 1 and it is 0 if mod x is greater than 1 right. So, this can certainly be uh, expressed as a Fourier the Fourier transform of this function can be taken although you cannot expand it as a Fourier series unless you extend this function right. So, we have seen that in the past. So, we have seen how you know if you are just given a function in some interval you can assume that it is you know for certain applications it is it is useful to think of this as as a uh, you know periodic function whose you know one period information has been given right. So, but suppose we do not do that right we can do a Fourier transform of this function and since the function is even it is convenient to find its Fourier cosine transform. So, now we have g c of alpha is equal to square root of 2 by pi right like we have seen the definition. So, the integral is from 0 to 1 cosine of alpha x d x and then you have so that gives you a sine of alpha x divided by alpha and the limits are from 0 to 1 and so only uh, the limit at x equal to 1 survives and so you are left with square root of 2 by pi sin of alpha divided by alpha right. So, if we invoke the inverse Fourier cosine transform right if g c of alpha is the Fourier cosine transform of f of x then f of x must be the inverse 
Fourier cosine transform of GC of alpha. So which means f of x should be written as this Fourier integral 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity sine of alpha divided by alpha times cosine of alpha x d alpha. And so this result immediately yields us a very useful integral which appears in you know many contexts and so that is obtained by you know putting x equal to 0. So we see that you know you can plot this function and see that at x equal to 0 there is no you know there is nothing weird about this function at x equal to 0. It's, it's super smooth, it's you know well behaved x equal to 0 is continuous you know all the nice properties that you can want for your function are satisfied and so the left surely this integral is going to convert so if, and it's going to has the value 1. So if we put f of 0 equal to 1 equal to 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity sin alpha by alpha d alpha right and then we bring this factor of pi by 2 to the left hand side or you rewrite the whole thing. So basically what we have managed to show is this integral 0 to infinity sin alpha by alpha d alpha is equal to pi by 2. So this is a very useful result this can be proved in, in other ways right but we see how the, the power of you know Fourier transform right. Uh, so this ex example is an exercise in you know illustrating how Fourier transforms also can you know do magic tricks for us. So we saw how Fourier series can sometimes get us you know infinite series you know you, and you, there, there are these magic results which we, we have shown some examples of and there will be homeworks along, along this as well. But so the point is that Fourier transforms can also give us these kinds of magic results of, and just one uh, simple example of which has been illustrated in this lecture. That is all for this lecture. Thank you.